We're now going to just discuss the trollop technique or the transluminal occlusion of perforators. In the past, incompetent or refluxing perforator veins uh, were sometimes not treated at all, and in fact many surgeons still don't treat them. They strip the vein or do endovenous laser ablation, and these are left untreated. But we know it's one of the commonest causes for varicose veins to come back, and sometimes it's the only cause for the varicose veins, and leaving them is just ridiculous. Uh, elsewhere in the College of Phlebology you will actually find arguments for this and it's also in the book that we provide the understanding of venous reflux. However, when we're just talking about how we're going to ablate them, before 1985 they had to be tied off and that was a big open operation. In 1985 a man called Hauer invented a way of c clipping them using a telescope. That was still general anaesthetic and quite a large incision. In 2000 we invented this way of do performing uh, closure with a radio frequency only technique and now it's useful for laser as well. Simply, a cannula such as this is placed into the incompetent perforator under ultrasound control, and that's what we call the trollop technique. It goes into the perforator, we then pull the catheter out, and we pass the ablation device into the perforator itself, the incompetent perforator, pull the sheath back, and at that point we can then use the energy source to destroy the incompetent perforator. Of course, we've also put local anaesthetic around, and when we actually do the practical side of this video, you'll see how it works. Now, when we first invented it in 2000 and started presenting it around, what we said is you had to use radio frequency, because in those days, the laser used to fire out of the end. And if you used an end-firing laser, that would mean the energy wouldn't stay only in the perforator, but might go into the deep vein. And we did see one or two patients from other units coming to see us who p surgeons had tried to perform this, had got the end-firing laser into the incompetent perforating vein, and then the heat and the gas had actually gone into the deep vein, destroying it, causing a deep vein thrombosis or occlusion. Nowadays, with the new radio firing laser, we can actually use this as well as the radio frequency, or instead of, we can pop this in knowing exactly where we're treating, and so we can treat only the perforator, and we can be absolutely confident that none of the energy is going to be transmitted to the deep vein, causing a deep vein problem.